Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Microsoft Virtual Academy, the intermediate day of ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Jeff Fritz, and I'm here with... Maria Nagaga. And we're going to take a look now at, at where the rubber meets the road, right? We've been doing all this development with ASP.NET Core 1.0, but what happens when we want to publish and, and get into production, right? We actually want to bring our web applications live for the web to be able to get to them. Exactly. You want to share all the cool things that we've been building, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everything from your very first Hello World app so you can actually show it to your friends and family. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to start off on my machine now, and we're going to just start a simple application and see what it takes to deploy to Azure. So I'm going to come over here into Visual Studio, and let's just start another application so we can see that simple deploy process. So I'm going to choose ASP.NET Core Web Application, and I'm going to name this, not Web Application 65, but let's call this Virtual Academy 101. Sure, we'll create a web application, and I'm going to choose to host in the cloud here. So by clicking on host to the cloud there, you're activating your current Azure subscription? So it's connecting to my current Azure subscription. I can choose to add a subscription if I need to, and it'll allow me to walk through all the resources that I need to configure the hosting service. Oh, that's good. So here I've got the web app name, and it puts this long identifier on the end just to make sure there's no conflicts here. I'm going to get rid of this little bit and just call it Virtual Academy. I can choose my subscription, and it's prompting me that my credentials are out of date here, so I need to key these back in again. And that'll refresh, and I should see my subscriptions pop up. There we go. And now I can choose one of these. I'm going to choose this one. And now I can choose a, a resource group. So let me put this in my East US. And then I can choose an app service plan, or I can create one. So this way, I have all of the resources for this application service, for this web application, in one container for billing, for location management. So I'm going to put this back in East US, and let's make it the free size. I don't need too much for no. this. I can click Create. So now it's creating the application locally. It's creating and provisioning resources in Azure for me. And when this is done spinning here, I'll be able to start editing and working with my application normally. So as soon as you, so you're creating this application for the very first time, yep. and it's creating it in both places? It's allocating the resources out in Azure. It isn't necessarily deploying it yet. I still have to do the deploy process. That's a All good right. point. So when I take a look here, all of my information is laid out. And you can see here it's preparing all the information to publish so that that can be done easily as I modify my application. I can publish by clicking this link. But let me actually put something into this so that it looks like I've, I've made a change or something to this, right? So I'm going to come into the home page, which is index. Why isn't that opening? There we go. And let me get rid of the carousel at the top of this. And I can get rid of some of these rows. And I can just start off with an H1. Hello. Virtual Academy. All right. So now we know that runs fine right here for us. Let's make sure that that builds and has all of my content to run locally before we go and start publishing something to run out on the cloud. There we go. Simple. So now let's publish that out to Azure. So all of my published profile information has already been created and is available to me in this application. I can right click on my project and I now have a publish option here I can choose. When I click that, here's the information pre-populated from that configuration that I wrote earlier. And 
there's my new web address where it's going to end up here in the destination URL field. Okay. Uh, my password is hidden. This is all information that was generated for me by Azure. So yes, let's deploy the release version. I can also choose to deploy a debug configuration. Um, file publish options, I can remove additional files. And if I had a database, I could configure that information here. So that would be where you add in some of your connection strings. I can change the connection strings. I can point to other database instances that I may already have configured in Azure. Yep. I can preview the set of files that are going to be deployed, but I'm just going to publish. And now we're going to see the status here as it compiles, and it already compiled here, so that went through very quickly. And it's going to go through that publish process. Gather everything, bundle it up, send it out to my production space in Azure. Published successfully, and now we're going to see this execute some commands to start the process out there. And we should see, in a, in a second or two, my browser open with my application running. Also, it will open up your application right as a website. Yeah. It, so because I've published this to a web application, it knows where it lives. It showed me that destination URL. It's going to open up my browser, pointing to that destination URL to show here it is running in the cloud. And there it is. I mean, that was that was maybe a minute or two. We did have a, a cut in there. We had to make some changes in the studio. But you can see that our website's loaded, and it runs just the same out in Azure as, as it, it did locally. Simple and easy process. Right-click and publish, and Visual Studio helps me get into the cloud. But what if I don't have Visual Studio? But, but before we jump to that, oh, if yeah. you made some changes to that code right now. Sure. Locally, uh -huh. how does the process work? How does it get updated? Do we have to republish it? We'll have to republish it. So let's let's write you know some more code here. You know this is another line of text, okay? And I can republish by coming through and right click, publish. But this is a manual process, right? I have to tell it, hey, I've got some changes. Go, Go publish, publish. and it's me doing it from my developer workstation. So is that you know, the best way for me to push something to production? You know, and a lot of organizations have controls around how things enter their production space. And there you can see it patched and updated my web application very, very quickly. I wasn't even done talking yeah. about it, and it was, it was done, done loading it. Yeah. So uh, some organizations have controls around how production is maintained, so you might not be able to, but in a smaller organization, this is real easy to do and keep your website up and running. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So if I wanted to do some other things, integrate with my source control or even continuous integration, how do I get started with that? Well, we can switch over to my computer and I can show you what I've learned today. Yeah, let's go over to Maria's computer here and take a look at how you can do those types of things. So uh, this is a program that we grew to love yesterday where we okay you know, showed Hello World several times. And before we even go to running it in the browser, uh, before we actually deploy it to get to Visual, to Azure, the first thing I want to do is actually show you that it's running locally. So okay. I'm not lying that it's existing somewhere out yeah. there. So I am just going to hit type.net run. And there we go. Our application has started. I'm going to go over to my browser, and I'm just going to open up a new tab. I'm going to go to localhost. All right, so here we are. Um, we're localhost 5000. I'm going to hit enter, and that's our very first Hello World app. Sure. But let's say you know I'm very proud of the work that I've done, and mm -hmm. I want to start sharing it with people. And I've begun to learn how to use Git. So what I did was I set up a new GitHub repository called the Stuff of Things, which I think is a very clever name, okay. where I just basically dump every single thing that I'm testing. Okay. And in this, I do have my application. It's called Git deploy test, and we'll go over here, same name. So what I want to do is I want to integrate GitHub with Azure. So I'm going to go over to the Azure portal. So, so, so let me get this right. So you have a, it's a public repository public. in GitHub. You've named it. You've got it all set up with your local uh, source control so that you can push and pull things back and forth from GitHub to your local machine. Yes. Okay, go ahead. It's all done. So I'm going to show you how to do this in the portal. This is something that you did 
right in Visual Studio. So yeah. you, you, you skipped this process. Yeah. So you, you wouldn't even need to do this, but if you didn't have Visual Studio, how would you do this? Okay. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to select a new item. And you're going to be presented with a couple of options. So I'm going to select web plus mobile. Okay. So this is just going to exist with a bunch of new web applications. So I'm going to select a web application. And I can give it a name. So what name should we give it? Well, this is the stuff of things. Stuff of things. I think that's a great name. There's actually a uh, store in my neighborhood called Stuff of Things <laughs> that is never opened. And I'm going to create a new resource group. It's never opened. It's never opened. Oh, and when gosh. it's opened, it's open for like five minutes. So we're kind of not sure what's going on there. <laughs> if you're the owner of the Stuff of Things store in Maria's neighborhood, that was not an advertisement. No, it wasn't an advertisement at all. So I have all the information that I need. And I should probably change the location because we live on the East Coast. So let's sure. represent the East Coast a little. So I have the East Coast, and I'm going to pin it to my dashboard because I like to see how it's getting built up. So I'll click Create. Yeah, these were very much, to your point earlier, those were very much similar fields to what I filled out in Visual Studio, but you now have them in the browser right there on the portal. Right there on the portal. And as you'll see, and, and this can take a while, you'll notice that it's begin. oh, actually took a pretty short time. Now we have Stuff of Things. Okay. But Stuff of Things has nothing in it. So if I went to Stuff of Things right now and I clicked on that, yep. I okay, copied so this there's URL. Our URL. Okay. Yeah. And I went in and let's say, do that. Yeah, there's nothing there. There's this nothing is, there. This it's, is the empty application. It's an empty application. It's okay. a blue screen of hope. <laughs> Right? It's a blue screen of hope that something is going something to happen. Cool something cool here. is going to happen yeah. here. Right? And we all know what's coming. It's a hello world. Absolutely. It's a hello world application. It's a hello world stuff of things. Stuff of things, right? So one of the things is that where would this fit? So I'm deploying an app, right? So we have different deployment options. Okay. So I'm going to go through the screen and you'll see deployment options. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be, give me an option like, Choose source. So there are different ways you can actually configure this application, right? Choose so, my deployment source. Where's where's the application coming from? Where is it coming from? Okay. Right? So let's see what they give us. So you can use Visual Te Visual Studio Team Services, mm -hmm. OneDrive, which I've never tried, but I really want to try it eventually, right? Uh, local Git repository, a GitHub, mm -hmm. a Git bucket, Bit Dropbox, bucket, yep. and uh, Dropbox, right? So these are Dropbox and OneDrive are things I haven't tried before, mm -hmm. but I'd, I'd wonder what that experience would be like. So I am going to pick GitHub because we also make GitHub repo. Sure. So I've already wired this up, but if I hadn't, you'd have to like put in a few webhooks to make sure everything mm -hmm. fits together and aligns. You need to authenticate yeah. back and forth, forth between the services. Otherwise, they'll have no idea who are you. It's a okay. kind of who are you situation. So we select GitHub, and it shows my GitHub name, uh, my organization, which is myself, but then notice, choose a project. Okay. Right? So the way I kind of think of this sometimes is like opening a project in Visual Studio. Yes. Right? So file, open, like an open from a particular mm -hmm. location. So I would click on this. I think GitHub calls them repositories. Yeah, a repository, right? right? So we have different options here, and these are all the repos that I have available. Gotcha. Um, and there are quite a few. Okay, not You've been a, busy. I've been busy, and these are from the past couple of weeks, so. We've been busy. We've been busy. We've been very, very busy. <laughs> and you'll notice stuff of things. Stuff of things, right at the top. Right at the top. That's good. It, I'm guessing they're ordered in the order that they were created or last activity or something. It's the last activity, okay. which I really appreciate it because if it was an alphabetical order, I'd have to scroll right through. Yeah, gosh. So this makes it a lot easier. Okay. So you select stuff of things. I click OK. And what it's doing here, it's beginning to set up the development sources. Mm. So this could take a while, so let's check. But once again, look at that. It, it popped successfully configured deployment source. It did, pretty quick. So if I go over, I believe, to overview, and then I select stuff of things, do you think we'll see Hello World? 
Did it do a deployment already? I don't think, think so. so. No. no. So let's check and see how that's going. So if I go over to all my resources and I look up stuff of things. Okay, there it is. There it is. So through the magic of editing, this is going to seem a lot faster than it is. So we're going to browse over and right. see if Hello World is up and running. Okay. So hit on Browse, and there we go. Fantastic. There's Hello World. Okay. But let's see what happened underneath the hood. So go to Deployment Options, and you'll notice this push, mm, right? That's yeah. a push of some sort of changes have happened. So th this was a commit that you made to your GitHub repository that now Azure sees, and it, that's what it did its deployment based on. Exactly. Okay. A good way to do this is why don't I go ahead and edit something else, and let's okay. see if we can see the changes in real time. Okay. So I'm going to put this over here, and I'm going to make some changes to my code. So instead of Hello World, let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's say, hello, Jeff. Save it. This is a cool thing. Notice in Visual Studio Code, there's that Git icon. Mm -hmm. I can click on that, and I can commit the changes right here. Now, if you're use, used to Git, this is something you do in the command line. Oh, yeah. Right? But let's say I want to skip that. Sure. So I, what I will do is I'll make added Jeff. Okay. That tick is the same as saying a git commit. OK. Commit to my local repository. The local repository okay. that you have. And then we see the output with it being committed. Right down there. OK. So after you do a commit, what's the next thing you do? Oh, you want to push. push. Right? Why don't we scroll over on Azure so we can see that list of deployments. Scroll to the right. And then uh, the. Scroll bar on the bottom. There you go. There we go. Okay. So I am going to make this push, and let's see if it shows up over here. Okay. So I'm going to hit a push. And we can see in the command box there on the bottom, bottom that it's pushing. There's some activity happening. Okay. And just in a little bit, there you see. Cool. So now we see the spinner going, that it's building, and then it's it's going to go through its deployment process at this point. Yeah. So that, that circle over there yeah. will eventually turn into a tick. Mm -hmm. Cool. Diff is, you know, the next change is part of this application. So we could browse to it, and we should see the change deployed. Yeah. So There it is. So if you did a refresh. refresh. OK, cool. So it was deployed, We've, and you were able to update your application just by committing to your Git, GitHub repository. Yeah. So if we go back to the deployments, there was it, it was interesting, right? So right, the tick mark is now on the that's the current deployment, the one on the top, and then the one below it is marked with the with the minus symbol there to show that it's no longer active. It was deployed at some point. Yes. Okay. Cool. That's that makes deployments and management a lot easier. Yeah, and it's just one of the many ways that you can actually do this. Okay. So if you want to learn more about this, you can go over to the Azure documentation and find the different ways that you can commit or push things to Azure. OK. Right. And we saw some of those just when you were configuring the deployment options. Yep. yep. Very cool. So it worked. Yep. So today we've learned that we can right-click and publish to Azure. From Visual Studio. From Visual Studio. OK. And that we can also publish through Git using continuous deployment. Yep. And tomorrow we're going to be exploring new things. OK. So we're going to be looking at cross-platform, where we'll be looking at things like, how do I do file new project on a Mac sure. when it's not there? OK. And we're going to be looking at Docker and different ways that we can work with ASP.NET Core. Yeah, Docker is one of those topics that there's a lot more going on there than just a, a virtual machine or you know me putting my application and, and the tools and framework around it somewhere that can be redeployed as an image. There's a lot there to learn.
Yeah, it's going to be a very exciting. We're going to have Glenn come in and talk about that, and okay. I can't wait to actually be in the next room listening and learning. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for joining us here on the intermediate day of the Microsoft Virtual Academy for ASP.NET Core 1.0. We hope you join us tomorrow as we get into those cross-platform topics. We'll see you then.